Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn and the Expedition Master Stream. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and I'm just going to announce this before every game this stream. Tournament, Saturday, December the 12th, the regular monthly tournament. This is the November 1v1 tournament, two weeks late. Sorry about that. I understand that Anarchid was busy. And actually, Aquanim is going to be running the tournament. So yeah, sign up for that. There'll be a link in the description when this is on YouTube, and you can go play that this Saturday at 10 a.m. UTC. 1v1 tournament, sign up. Even if you don't think you're going to win, just sign up because you don't know. You might. And you'll at least get three games in. Or you should. I'll double check that it's double elimination, but you should get three games in because that's how double elimination works. Well, it's a bit complicated, but basically best of three winners, best of one losers. You get three games guaranteed. On to this game. Play Platy Helminth versus Common Player. On Red Comet. Now, a map which will require some introduction, even though it is basically a classic map. I actually haven't shown this map in a while. Platy Helmet starting out in the southwest. Common player in the northeast. Both players starting out in the more defensive positions. The center positions are commonly used for more aggressive players, since it allows you to very quickly get to your opponent, or faster than normal. And also, you get this area in the back more or less for free, but you don't get it defended as easily. So attacks from the north or from the south can get to it when, if you started out in the northeast or southwest, it would be easier to defend. So what will likely happen is both players will be going north a bit and then east a bit. Usually players will expand all the way to the north or all the way to the south and then start going towards the north center, south center. But I'm not entirely sure what these players will do. You can just go to the center as well. It's just... You can more easily defend this choke point than you can this wide open space. Even though this wide open space is much more lucrative. Like, there are as many metal extractors in this one small section as there are on the entire eastern or western sides. And Platy Helmet getting a few good fights off right at the start. Pretty much taking a couple scorches for free from the looks of it, getting one of. Oh, losing a dart but getting a scorcher. Good trade! So Platy Helmet managing to defend decently well. I think the start got lost. That that seems likely to me. It, it doesn't look like it was actually supposed to be there. But it's getting commanded again. And nice, however, common player able to get in, deal a fair amount of damage. Getting rid of one of the metal extractors, not bad. Now, for reference, the best thing you want to do when you're inside an opponent's base is get rid of their energy. They get rid of the power plants. Metal extractors are easier to kill, but it's also easier to reclaim. Everything drops metal. Like, everything that dies has metal reclaim. But not energy reclaim. So if you can take out your opponent's energy grid, you take out a lot more of their production in their main base. Now in the expansions, it doesn't matter. In the expansions, they probably won't have a worker nearby. If they do, you can take that out as well. But if they don't, then there's all this reclaim that's going wasted. So they lost that metal and didn't have much to make up for it. In their main base, though, yeah, they're going to have a builder or commander or the factory to get builders. They'll reclaim it, no problem. As we, I mean, has been reclaimed yet. Man, 130 metal worth of reclaim at this stage in the game? That's pretty good. Not sure when we're going to see Platy Helmuth actually take that. But Platy Helmuth, four Scorchers to common players, two or so. That's... That's going to be difficult to deal with. Bloody Helmet's counterattack could be, depending on where they attack, very effective. It could also completely be botched if they attack the wrong place. But assuming that they don't botch it, it should work out fine. Although at this point now, with Common Player having four scorches as well, Platy Helmet doesn't really have much of an easy way in. Both players... Okay, so Common Player knows that the Scorchers were somewhere around there. Platy Helmet did move them out of the way. Does have radar... Oops. Does have radar along their corner of the map, but ha neither player really expanding too much. Actually, I'm really surprised. Neither player really expanding much to the north. Platy... Or Common Player expanded a little bit to the center, eastern side, but not to the southeast. And Common Player losing all their Scorchers. This is going very well for Platy Helmet. This is exactly what Platy Helmet would have wanted. And... Did want, I'm sure, because they've succeeded. At this point, the commander is dead. Common player's commander is in jeopardy. 
Common player bringing a Scorcher to try to deal with that will be able to get rid of possibly two, two of the Scorchers. Okay, never mind. They're not quite as bad. If those Scorchers weren't damaged, that would have been a very different story. But because of that damage they had sustained beforehand, because they were the ones up front, the commander basically wiped them out. Unfortunately for Platy Helmet, that was that was a calm dive. Like five Scorchers, you only need four. So five Scorchers was even then already good. Unfortunately, that damage just did them in. It's that's a tricky thing to bear in mind. One of the things about Zero K that's kind of tricky to bear in mind is just how quickly units. To I wonder what that's waiting for. It doesn't know either. That's made a time of arrival is a complete mystery. But yeah, with the commander, it's just. Okay. With the commander, it is, yeah, four Scorchers for the most part, and it's dead. Especially a level one Econ commander. That's, well, support commander, rather. That's just death. However, now it's dead. Now the commander has no chance of surviving that. Ooh, nice. The, the death burst did get rid of most of those Scorchers, leaving Platy Helmets unable to deal with this. As I was saying, in 0k, you have to be careful because one of the biggest micro-challenges is managing range. That's the main micro-challenge of the game. There aren't really activated abilities or anything. It's just managing range. And managing what will get hit. And with with units that aren't Scorchers dodging projectiles, but Scorcher projectiles can't really be dodged. You can sort of do it, but not effectively. Like the Heat Rays aren't instant hit, but they are a big line, so it's difficult to dodge them. Common player going, however, for a bit of revenge. Platy Helmet having lost most of their army to the Commander Death Burst does put Common Player at a slight military advantage. And also, Common Player with a couple Caretakers, they only need one. Platy Helmet also putting their economy into their factory, so both players have managed to get past the 20 Metal Hump without issue. Although I don't agree with Platy Helmet's approach, they really should build a Caretaker and move that Commander out. That Commander is also level 1. Nano Lathe and Shotgun, yeah, they need to move that out. Get that Commander out of there, get that into... Oh, yeah, see, common player just winning this fight handily. So, the other thing about killing a commander in this... And Platy Helmet throwing in the towel, I really don't agree with them having kept their commander in their base. I was, As I was just saying, they should have set up a caretaker and moved that out, because the commander is the easiest thing to expand with. They expand over to the south with that, and then use some workers to expand all the way to the northwest. Although I also don't agree that Platy Helmet had to lose them. They could have easily... They, they were pretty even. That that was a premature resignation. No toys about it. But yes, the calm death burst is one of the biggest things about fighting a commander. If you're gonna kill a commander, try to move as many units out of the way as possible before it dies. It's a really tricky judgment call to know when it's gonna die. And make sure you have enough units there to kill it that will sacrifice themselves in the process. But overall, try to have as few units die as possible, because that's where comebacks can happen. If you're not careful. Oh, Dorch pointing out that because of Scorchers, moving the support commander out is really scary. That's a fair point. I will grant that. I won't, however, grant the fact that there were no expansions built over to the Northwest. Even with Scorchers, that's typically how it's built. Like, if you lose them, just rebuild them. It's no big deal. Especially for the amount of econ you get. Like, for what Platy Helmet had, Platy Helmet was even with Common Player. If they had added the Northwest expansions, they would have been well ahead. Anyway, that was that interesting game. I've never actually seen player once months ago. So that was interesting to see a couple players that I don't get to see very often. And next match will be another one, I believe, with players I don't get to see very often. Anir and Dorsch. Oh, Dorsch again! Okay, maybe they'll redeem themselves. I've not seen Anir either. I'm not entirely sure how they play, but we'll find out. So that'll be up in just a moment.